Good morning, church. Today, we're looking at Matthew chapter 8. So this is the, the Sermon on the Mount has come to an end. Jesus has laid out this clear uh, explanation of, of what it means to be part of the kingdom of heaven. And now he's going to go live it out. Immediately as he's coming down from the mountain, he's approached by a leper, an outcast, someone who is low on the social totem pole, has no resources, no friend uh, to care for them. Uh, and he makes them clean. He uses the gifts that God's given him to bless them, to lift them up to new life. Uh, and it's all within God's pattern for him. And this is a demonstration of uh, what he's been saying in the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, that the low will be raised up and the, the high will be made low. It's emphasized down in verse 11, uh, after he heals the centurion's uh, servant, he says, I tell you, many will come from the east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. He's saying the people who feel like they belong, the religious people, the people who come to church every week and their their house is uh, nice and well put together and, and their family is, is handsome and uh, They've got beautiful young daughters and uh, well-dressed and smiles on their faces when they come in the door. The religious folks will be cast down into darkness, while those who are hungry and in need and thirsty and broken and uh, they clearly don't have it all together, they're a mess. Those are the ones who will come and find that they are accepted at the covenant table of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They will find the blessings of God. This runs so counter to what we expect and how we act. We come to church and we say, I've got it all together and my family's pretty and our house is uh, a beautiful place and we're well provided for and clearly we've got it all together. When Jesus wants us to be the broken people that we are, he wants us to say, no, I don't have it all together. These are the places where I'm broken and I'm dependent on God to get me where I need to go. I'm dependent on God for salvation. I'm dependent on God not just for the big problems, but minute by minute, by second by second. I have to be dependent on God or I'm going to be part of those who are cast out into outer darkness. And, uh, it's, it's a harder place to live. He, he's talking to um, this scribe that comes up and wants to follow him, and but he's got to go bury his father. He's got stuff to take care of. He's got... Uh, He's got responsibilities, important things. Bearing your father is not important, but Jesus says foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And what he's saying is, if there's any responsibility, if there's anything in your life that is too important and it, it, it burdens you from following Jesus wherever he leads and the moment he calls, then you have lost sight of what real faith is. We have to be unburdened with those things. We have to set them down, turn them aside. Uh, my favorite hymn is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. At the end of that hymn, uh, the last line says, let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Whatever good things we think we bring to the table, whatever uh, righteousness, whatever uh, skills, whatever uh, resources we think God needs or God is impressed with or other people are impressed with or other people need us for, we have to be willing to let those go at the drop of a hat because God, more than any of that stuff, wants you. And he wants your whole heart undivided. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like, and it's hard. Are you willing to step into that kind of life?